Hello people of the internet, this is Shaky Jake and I really need a catchphrase and for some bizarre reason HK47 is lying on the floor of the Ebon Hawk when I loaded up my save and I have no idea why. Statement. Master, <laughs> I must express some okay. of Okay, odd glitch. As I have studied your actions looking for potential vulnerabilities to exploit, I have found several. Right, so before I carry on, previously on Knights of the Old Republic 2, we finished off with Dantarine in a two-part recording where I split up a whole bunch of recordings I did and then made them two episodes because otherwise it would have gone on for far too long. And I said last time I was going to move on to the next planet. However, I've decided that I still don't know where I'm going to go. Uh, for my next planet, so I've decided to just, you know, talk to my party members on the Ebon Hawk for this part and take it easy. And we're going to start with HK-47, seeing as we just got him, or fixed him, rather. So, what was the question? Potential vulnerabilities, okay. Vulnerabilities. Statement. You seem disposed to helping others, not harming them as I have come to expect and anticipate from organic meat bags across the galaxy. How would you know? I've only just repaired you. You you shouldn't have this knowledge this early on. Why are you studying me for vulnerabilities? Statement. Master, it is nothing personal, but professional pride dictates that I keep a running tally on any potential weaknesses in my masters. And, of course, the weaknesses of any other sentient meatbags, droids, or other targets who are in service to my master. Okay. And, yeah, you don't want to say the whole mercy and charity isn't a weakness, because that's going to lose influence of HK, so... What? Protect me? Hypothetical. Master, it is entirely possible that one day... You may no longer be my master, and that my new master might get jealous of our prior relationship. It has happened before. As a result, I have a responsibility to know your weaknesses should I be required to assassinate you. I've heard enough. I'll be going now. So we haven't lost any influence there, which is nice. But my plan for this particular part is to talk to all of my party members, particularly two of them, because something special should happen with at least one of them, hopefully both of them, if I uh, play my cards right. Now, the way I'm editing this episode is going to be a bit weird, so I don't actually know if this will be towards the beginning of the, the final edit or if it's going to be all over the place, but... I've done a couple of recordings before this to level up certain party members off screen and the ones in question I'm hoping to do something special with later. So before I carry on with HK47 I'm going to actually I'm going to ignore this ass for a moment but it, a bit of an interesting start having HK47 lie on the floor here because that doesn't normally happen. I think the game just got a bit confused when I reloaded. I don't know. But this is where HK47 stands in this game. So when you leave the Ebon Hawk once and you come back in, that's where he'll stand. Admittedly, if you actually repair HK47 here and then travel to another planet, he seems to stay here, at least initially. I don't know if I just got lucky there but did a did that off screen and that happened so that was interesting to see let's talk to Atten and yes you'll notice I still haven't left Dantarine so Atten how are you doing I don't know what it is but you look different it's hard to explain but it's uh it's good to see it's hard to explain but even with everything that's happening I feel at peace it shows it's kind of inspiring to be honest Anyway, just wanted to mention it. I think the others have noticed it too. And nothing, never mind. So that conversation will happen every so often with your party members. If I was dark-sided, they'd just be saying, bloody hell, you look ugly round about now. But thankfully, nobody said that yet. What do you mean, Pazak? What, again? This is Ronto Scrag. What house rule says I have to go first? Yeah, well, 
Well, I'm still not convinced you aren't cheating. Warning. If you draw another plus minus one card, I will enact assassination protocols. This droid is cleaning me out. Could you guys keep it down? Your fighting is irritating me. Yeah, keep it down, trash compactor. Look, it's your irritating deets and dee deets that can be heard all over the damn ship, alright? What are you playing? Pazak. Well, I'm playing. It's cheating. Whatever, cheater. Can I play? Sure, but I don't have any more credits to bet, so it's Republic Senate rules. Republic Senate rules? That's where we waste a lot of time trading cards and trying to win. But ultimately our decisions are of no consequence. It's like stalemate, except the goal is to pass the time until the audience gets bored and leaves. Deal me in. And as you can see, I recorded this before anything else in this part, and I've edited it out of order. So essentially, I play Pazak here because the game gives you the option to do so, and I mix the various conversations together because you can't normally say all these lines in one go. And bizarrely, I actually do quite well at this Pazak match, and I actually win, which doesn't happen very often, but my look at Pazak games is normally better in the sequel compared to the original game. So there you go. Ooh, we got a cutscene. I do like this cutscene though. Statement. My memory core has suffered some damage. Statement. Yet somehow, a gap in my circuits makes me feel as if I should remember you. Statement. This is all the more important since during my routine inspection of all potential escape routes from this vessel, I made an interesting discovery. Observation. The Nava computer is voice locked. As a consequence, you are now responsible for course corrections and astrogation. Statement. That is indeed a great burden. It also raises many questions. Query. Why would someone lock the Nava computer? Answer. Presumably to hide where one has been. Statement. I believe you've been somewhere. Somewhere you wish to keep hit. Ooh, T3. You've got some attitude since the first game where you were just a plot device. Now you actually have character. Kreia, do you have anything to say at this point? We haven't actually talked to you for a while. Yes. Have you come with questions? When Vissas attacked, she did something to my eyesight. She did nothing to your eyes that was not already there. She has forced this upon you, but such crude methods are the markings of the Sith. Close your eyes. What? Close your eyes. Alright. Feel this ship around you. Listen to my words. Hear the sound of the handmaidens training in the cargo hold, her hands cutting the air. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Hey, T3 has a stuck motivator. Now, stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace, the hum of the hyperdrive. Hey, I can hear a catch in it. It's not fully fixed. Ignore distractions and focus on my voice. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. Now, listen deeper past her breathing and listen. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death and I heard her thoughts you are strong indeed 
What you heard was surface thoughts only, but it is something that masters have trained for for years and never learned. Well, they must have sucked. But how did I do that? That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not. Because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. I must rest. And thanks to that, I gained plus one awareness, which is awesome. And we gained some influence with Kreia, which is good. But for now, let's start with... Where's T3, actually? I want to talk to T3, see if I can fix him up a bit. Oh, there he is. Right, T3, how are you doing? Yes, I appreciate this is a really awkward place to meet up, but... How's the Ebon Hawk? T3, I really appreciate your help. I'm sure I've had this conversation already, but if not, it's a good influence opportunity. What about the astrogation system? Oh, we got a... We got an influence success there. You locked it. Why did you do that? Because depending on how I've edited this part, we've already seen that cutscene. If not, then spoilers for the future. Protect. Protect who? Under whose orders? An old friend. Why were... Well, hold on. Why was where this friend had gone? I'm trying to read that out loud in my head and that sounds really odd. Why was where this friend had gone so dangerous? No, that does make sense. Why was where this friend had gone so dangerous? Apologies for that. My uh, my brain faltered over the way that was phrased. But how did the Ebon Hawk come back from there if it was so dangerous? And why? T3, you have been with us since Terrace. Without you, we would never have escaped that place. And for that, I thank you. I'm leaving this message inside you because I have seen glimpses of the future. And the bond that he and I share does not allow him to hide everything from me. More of his memories have returned, and they trouble him. He has remembered something. Something on the edge of the galaxy. And he believes that he must go there to end it. But I am afraid for him. Afraid that he may not return. I need you to be the beacon, T3. If he is lost out there, on the edge of the galaxy. If he finds whatever terrible thing he has seen. Then he may not survive. If he doesn't make it back. Then I need you to return to the Republic. Find help. If you cannot find me, then seek out other Jedi. The Republic... I can't lose him. Even if he believes he is protecting me. Ah, Bastila. Been a while since we've seen or heard of her. Friend of yours? I don't understand why you were concealing that from me. Who was the person the hologram was talking about? Another missing friend? What happened to your old friend? Why aren't you with him? Because he could not take anyone with him. Even the woman in the hologram. And he left you. I'm sorry, T3. So this hologram that T3 shows you there is depending on how the first game ended. So if you're... Male, you get a Bastila themed one. If you're female, I think you get calf. And then if you're light-sided or dark-sided, it changes the tone of 
whatever car for Bastila say. It's actually really interesting to watch all of the different combinations. But you did help. You found us, T3. If we can stop the Sith, then there is hope after all. Is that message what you were trying to hide? So this help you came in search of. You came in search of me. I'm trying to see if I can do every single dialogue choice I can. But why me? I was powerless. Defenceless. I like to think Team 3 is telling us everything, but we just can't understand it. So, but you know, he's giving way more information than we're actually privy to. Both of these dialogue choices are quite good, but... You needed someone strong enough to fight the danger that was coming. Someone who knew war, and battle, and could make the hard choices that had to be made. And option number two is incredibly harsh. I'm honoured, T3. I will do what I can to stop this threat. Even though I'm supposed to be a bitter ex-Jedi. And... Never mind, I'll be going now. So we got light side points and influence with T3, so that was good. Let's talk to you again. And... Do you know where that HK droid in the cargo bay came from? Oh, we got influence success again. Excellent. You were trying to rebuild him. Why? Yeah, this is going to be a part with a lot of talking. Not much gameplay this time. Except for one or two bits. Wow, option two is brutal. And a very easy way to lose influence, I imagine. To protect me. But that's an assassin droid. A deranged assassin droid. I'd rather have your help, and that's it. Even though HK-47 is awesome. It is awesome that we've seen Bastila, though, as a tie-in to the first game. Yes, I understand you're not a combat mod... Alright, alright. Where did you get it from? But this is why, where he's saying, you know, oh, we got it from Tatarine ages ago. Any idea how its parts got scattered all over the galaxy? I have other questions for you. Thankfully, nobody seems to be walking in on us so far. Uh, let's just try asking him about the astrogation system again. Uh, you locked it, why did you do that? But the Republic is already in trouble, I'm not sure what else you're protecting it from. Why didn't they want to know where the ship had been? So the astrogation system was crippled to prevent learning where the Ebon Hawk had been. Can you find it again? And why did you leave? So you've just seen the hologram again. I've just edited that out because it's you know it doesn't you don't need to see it again. Friend of yours, and I don't understand why you were concealing that from me. Now this is what I want to say because I missed out on it the first time. I understand. I didn't think you kept messages like that. Never mind. I'll be going now. Got some experience points. Talk to you again. Mind if I try to upgrade your memory core again? Alright, let me take a look. Hopefully this will go well. Oh no, we didn't do very well, okay. Must be a problem in the uh, vocabulator connection. We'll try again later. Let's try repair. I'll try and make this quick, and hopefully more successfully than the previous occasion. That's better. All done with the response package. Give it a spin.
and T3's response systems have improved, giving him permanent plus one dexterity. Fantastic. As long as you're fixed, don't worry about me suddenly blanking out. Never mind, I'll be going now. Right, we'll leave T3 alone now. Let's move on to HK. Hello. Query, is there someone that you need killed, Master? No, not particularly. Would you stop asking that? Statement. Master, assassination is my primary function. It is only expected that when you speak to me, it is to give me the order to kill. Yeah, the getting influence of HK on a more light-sided playthrough is actually very difficult, so I'm going to have to be quite manipulative with him. I order you to stop asking me who I need killed. Statement. Oh, very well, Master. No doubt you are bothering me because you wish to interrogate me with harmless, non-lethal questions. Or perhaps you need the deck of your freighter scrubbed, or an exciting alien text translated. My circuits are abuzz with anticipation of what your next <laughs> task will be for me that does not involve ending the life of an organic meatbag that deserves death. Oh, HK is so sarcastic in this game. I do have some questions. Statement. Ah, oh, you wish to conduct an interrogation? Very well, proceed. It also helps that HK-47 has more personality than the HK-50s we've encountered. Interrogation? Statement. Oh, yes, Master. Pain is really the only reliable means by which truth may be obtained. Or so I choose to believe. It's not an interrogation. I just want to ask you some questions. Statement. Very well, Master. But if you wish to be brutal and vicious about it, know that I am trained for such things. Do your worst. Okay, enough with the interrogation already. When I ask you questions, I mean I will ask you questions without torturing you. Statement. Master, I am no behaviour droid, but it is obvious to me that you have serious ethical problems that will need to be treated at some point. Very well. <laughs> ask your questions. If you feel the need to make it an interrogation, however, do not restrain yourself. I would be saddened if you held back. That explains a lot about what HK likes. Why were you in our storage hold? Answer. I do not know, Master. It is curious that I was here, although this place does seem familiar. <laughs> Extrapolation. Perhaps someone was already in the process of rebuilding me. It may be I was needed for some task. Well, judging by that brief cutscene of T3 there, I imagine it was him based on what he told us. I have more questions. Statement. Ah, more questions. Wonderful. Isn't it just? I found the Navi computer tampered with. Any idea why it's locked? Query. Indeed, I was unaware that the Nava computer was locked. Maybe I will play that cutscene after this so it makes a bit more narrative sense. Yes, it's voice printed. Statement. Yes, I heard it was voice printed. Most curious. Or maybe not, because the narrative's a little bit inconsistent here. You can mimic languages, right? Can you unlock it? Statement. I suppose so, Master. But I would need to know who voice locked it, and regrettably, I do not have that knowledge. It seems to me that we will have to accept the T3's astrogation abilities for the time being. It is a very loyal and dependable droid for its class. Okay, so we can probably play that cutscene before this. Whatever, the writing's a little bit iffy here, but I think that will work when I edit it together. I have more questions. Statement. Yeah, okay, I don't need to hear that again. Now, this next dialogue option I'm going to pick is going to set up a major part of the later game for the restored content mod. You look a lot like a series of droids that have attacked me. Answer. Oh, that is impossible, Master. If I were out to kill you, we would not be speaking. And regardless, I am a unique model. Why, to think that there would be other versions of me would be unacceptable. Oh, I agree. 
Well, there's at least four other now defunct versions of you in the galaxy. Probably more at this stage. Statement. Master, I must inform you that your attempts at humor are wasted on a droid such as I. As I have expressed, I am unique. Aren't you just? There's a series of HK-50 units sharing your model and function that we have encountered on multiple occasions. Resignation. Very well, Master. If you persist in your attempts at humor, I shall indulge you. Let me check the ship's records, and we will settle this matter once and for all. Conclusion. You speak the truth. This discovery is also causing me some degree of anger and humiliation. Are you alright? Mockery. Am I alright? Oh, yes, <laughs> Master. Why, I am fine. Statement. I mean, I've only just been reactivated, only to find that there are substandard duplicates of me running all over the galaxy, corroding my good name. But if they are in fact hunting you, then I look forward to the opportunity to meet these units and educate them in proper assassination protocols. Conclusion. So it seems I need you, for the time being. It probably would have made more sense if I had activated this conversation in the previous part, but I figured I'd leave it for here, because I wanted something special for this part, or a few special things for this part, so I have more questions, because there's no point Actually, is there? No, I'll, I'll go with this. I wanted to talk about the other HK units. Statement. Ah, yes. Them. Very well. What did you wish to know? Do you know where these clones are being created? Answer. Master, I do not know. I have tried in vain to find it, but so far the location of the factory churning out these copies has eluded me. And the only way we can get that is if we take HK with us when we take on more HK-50s. But how did this happen? Statement. I have no idea, Master. What was that? Sounded like a malfunction. Statement. Oh no, Master. Surely you are mistaken. I would never malfunction in such a way on purpose. Are you sure you don't know where they are striking from? Prompt. Do you understand me? I have no idea. It simply isn't a matter of it being locked in my memory core and being unable to communicate it to others. I actually love how much wittier HK is in this game. It's more angry, dry wit compared to the first game. Where he is funny in the first game, but this one, he's even more dry. And how would this information come out if it was locked in your memory core? Answer. I fear that any such information that exists would only come out when a certain sequence of events takes place. That is why I am eager to encounter more of these clones in the hopes that something clicks that allows me to finally pull the trigger. And that's why you have to take HK with you when you take on some HK-50s. Annoyingly, it is possible to still miss out on this quest even if you do that so what i recommend doing is you take hk 47 with you when a hk 50 crew appears because the the restore content mod, mod gives you a good number of them to take out on different planets can't remember the exact number but it's more than enough and then what you want to do is talk to hk afterwards and then hope that you get some cutscenes trigger when you get back to the ebon hawk or maybe you don't have to talk to hk and the cutscenes trigger in the Ebon Hawk. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure you have to talk to him. Because I remember I went through one playthrough where I didn't get anything, so you have to be very careful. I always make sure to talk to HK straight after killing them. Now, I have more questions. How did you get scattered all over the galaxy? Theory. Well, Master, I believe I was shot repeatedly. Once reduced to my component parts, I suspect pieces of me were sold across the galaxy statement. I am an extremely valuable piece of equipment after all, Master. My parts were no doubt costly to obtain, and their new owners hesitant to part with them. Yeah, it did set me back a few credits, and it was something of a pain. Statement. That is indeed unfortunate, Master. It is merely another thing my attacker will answer for. I would be most distressed if you were to shoot me, attack me, or dismember me in any way. I do not wish to repeat the experience. Who was your previous master, although I bet you won't tell me? Answer. Master, ironically enough, 
I seem to have developed a sudden bout of memory loss. I shall struggle to recall an answer to your question, but for now, it is sadly beyond my capabilities. Consolation. Besides, you are a fine master. Do not be worried about being rendered insignificant if I were to inadvertently compare to some silly old master I once possessed. Well, I know who owns you, but... Okay, more... Statement. And... Do you know anything about the Sith hunting us? Answer. No, master, I do not. I am afraid I have been out of touch with the Sith for many years. This new Sith threat fights differently than the ones I was familiar with. These seem to favor stealth and assassination to achieve their ends. The only way this could possibly make sense is if HK had encountered them before he was destroyed, but I don't know. Any idea where they might be striking from? Answer. No, master. The Sith had many hidden bases and strongholds before and during the Jedi Civil War, and I doubt the Republic found them all. Theory. It is possible that the Sith still hold one such base, if not several. Consolation. But I would not worry, Master. I imagine it will not be long before their murderous hands try to seize you by the throat. Twi'lek metaphor. That is awesome. I love that he actually speaks an alien language for a change. You can say that again. Query, Master, excuse me, but how is it you know so many languages? I picked up a sonic imprint sensor on Paragus. It doubles as a translator, which is a completely different explanation as to why your character from the first game understands alien languages, and props to Obsidian for differentiating it for this game. Query, may I see it? Right, yes. This is important because this will also. This is why I think I also missed out on the HK quest in one playthrough I did because I forgot to show him this. This is vitally important. So, anyone playing the Restore Content mod, pay attention to this. Why? Answer Because it seems to know all the languages I do, and I am feeling degrees of familiarity and inferiority both at once. Yeah, here you go. Observation. This is indeed familiar. Indeed, it seems to be modelled after my vocabulator, with some modifications, of course. Curious. You say you obtained this device on Paragus. Yes, shortly before the planet was destroyed. Observation. Master, I do believe this device serves multiple functions, including tracking your position for any HK units in the vicinity. Can you use it to track them? Confirmation. Yes, Master, I believe so. Of course, we would need to find three separate HK squads and use this device in order to target their base. And there we go. This is part of the Restore Content mod. It's very important. So we just wait? Answer. Master, the nature of the signal from the sonic imprint sensor is such that we must wait until it is signaled. It does not please me any more than it does you, but one of the primary traits of an assassin or assassin droid is patience. And one last one. For a sophisticated assassin droid, you don't seem as advanced as you should be. Statement. Master, you wound me. Not physically, but in my behavior core. It is true <laughs> that I once possessed many more protocols and upgrades, but time and damage has taken its toll. And I am afraid that I have a rather long history of memory problems, which has also compromised my effectiveness as well. Still, you will find me a valuable asset master, willing and able to terminate anything you point me towards. That also explains why HK and T3 actually go back many levels, from level 20 in the first game to like level 3 and level 6 or something. It's actually quite a clever bit of writing there. And I think that's it for now. Right, so we didn't gain or lose influence, which is nice. We talked to HK for quite a while, and some of the conversations there didn't quite make sense because I don't get how HK would know certain stuff while he was out of commission. But the vast majority of that was worthwhile, and the Ebon Hall music has stopped, which is annoying. Beodor, do you have anything new to say? 
Yes, General. We haven't actually talked to him properly for a while, so... And again, I apologise if I'm repeating conversations. It's been so long since I've done this. Where did you pick up that remote anyways? That old thing? I built him when I was a kid. Been following me around for years now, despite what I've done to try and chase him off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. What does it do, other than follow you around? He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. He's also good for singeing the pens of annoying techs. I've been thinking about doing some other work on him, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I can help you with? Well, yeah, the Ebon Hawk's more important. What are you doing? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space-worthy. Whoever made these repairs doesn't think like most mechanics. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape. Right, I don't think there's much we can do with Bayador at the moment. I think I need more influence with him. Now, I know you're thinking, I should talk to this ass around about now. And I will. Just not yet. Because, one thing I forgot to explain... A couple of parts ago, I didn't explain this, but... If you talk to this ass for too long, the handmaiden gets snappy with you and decides to never talk to you again for the entire game. It's absolutely petty and ridiculous, but the way I like to do it is get handmaiden sorted out first and then I talk to this ass. I'm very fussy that way. Now, handmaiden, I'm, I apologise that I completely forgot to get you dressed again. But, in all honesty, it saves time for these last few fights. So let's talk to you. Oh, welcome, Exile. Is there something you need? Yeah, are you alright? Yes, your features, your stance. There is a calm about you that I did not notice on Telos. Are you trying to seduce me, Handmaiden? What do you mean? There is an energy about you, a lightness in your movements. It is something I have seen in only the most disciplined and revered of the Ichani Weapon Masters. Yet it comes to you with ease. I do feel better. I feel more in touch with my surroundings. And others. It shows in your features. It is beautiful to see. Why, thank you. Can I ask you some questions? You may ask. I want to talk to you about your mother. What of her? As I said, I knew little about her. Did you know that she was a Jedi Knight? This is already known to me. Why are you telling me this? Because the Force runs strong in bloodlines, and you could learn to use it to help others. I do not know enough of you yet to speak of such things. I do not know your stance, your heart. Perhaps if we were to train together in battle, my thoughts on this would be clearer. But not now. And that's what we're going to focus on. Let's get these fights done. I have more questions. You may ask. Teach me more fighting moves. Very well. I think you are ready for the next tier of instruction. For this, we will keep the etiquette of the last duel. But we shall add any melee weapon you choose to the ritual. With the exception of the Jedi weapon, the Saber. Fibro blade, Bothan stun stick, force pike. Whatever you wish. But no items. No force techniques. Says the woman who used a shield on me that one time. All right, let's go. Then let us begin. This is honestly the one time I'm regretting not investing in strength and also leveling up handmaidens, making this more difficult than it needs to be. Stop getting lucky with these shots. Okay, that's going a bit better. Flurry seems to be working quite well. We've still got one more fight after this and I'm struggling on this one. Come on, don't knock me unconscious again. There we go. You fought well indeed. You have caught the principles of the style by watching and anticipating my movements. 
Right, now, let's talk to the handmaiden again, once I've made a save. That took far too long. I've cut all the bad attempts out because that was honestly ridiculous, and I've had it set too easy and I was struggling. Yes? Can you teach me more fighting moves? I think you are ready for the final tier I wish to teach. You have made much progress. For this, you may use any melee weapon and any shields you possess, but nothing else. No Jedi Saber and no other items. Thanks for letting me use a shield. Let's do this. We shall begin this final lesson then. And then you can put your clothes back on because you're being disrespectful on my ship. <laughs> and I'm sorry for not getting you dressed earlier. It just saves time asking you to disrobe and then have a fight with me. So I'm going to be a bit cheap and put this shield on here. Now let's flurry you to submission hopefully. Wow, she can even damage through the shield. Well done. Oh, come on. At least she's not stunning me, because that would have been a pain if she did. It also doesn't help I have the worst type of flurry. There's no way she should be doing that much damage while I've got a shield on. And thankfully she's not using one because she hasn't got one equipped. One more, come on. There we go. Atris was correct about you. You know war, its motions and currents. There is nothing more I can teach you. Really? Then maybe I can teach you some things. I have already learned much of your styles in combat. There is no need to know more. What's the problem? Combat among the Ichani is a personal thing. Repeated duels are not what they are in other cultures. And I would rather that this not become more than it is. And I have taken an oath to Atris against studying from a Jedi, or anything of the Jedi teachings. Why? My father broke his oaths. He shamed us all. I do not wish to follow his path. I swore not to follow his path. If I were to follow a Jedi against Atris's wishes, then I would be betraying her for you. All of these options are very valid. If I am lost, then all I know, all I can teach will be lost. I wish someone to know what I have learned. This is a difficult thing for me to say, but I ask that you be silent as I tell you this. It is my desire to learn from you what you can teach me of battle. I have already learned much in our duels, but with every battle, I wish to know more of you. Your stance, your movements, I can sense shades of meaning and an echo of something I have yet to experience. Atris said that you were the only Jedi to have survived the Mandalorian Wars, that you had stared into the heart of war and only turned away because you were forced to. I do not believe her. I believe that you made a choice, as my father did, and that is important to me, more than you know. And you are important to me more than you know. I will accept whatever you wish to teach me, though it breaks my oath to Atris. Have you thought about your heritage? I have thought about what you have said, of my mother, of my bloodline. There is something I would ask of you. And so it ends. I want you to teach me the ways of the Force. To become a Jedi Knight like my mother. And you have to make sure you've talked to Kreia about Aaron Kai at least once, because otherwise you won't be able to do this. Fortunately, I already have, so... I'm just looking over the options again. I mean, option number five is very arrogant and very dark-sided. I am tempted to pick it, though. If you do this, you will break your vow to Atrus. There is the betrayal of Atrus. And there is the betrayal of my mother and father. After seeing you in battle, I know you more than I have ever known Atrus. And I am not convinced that serving her is the greater good. I want to feel what my mother felt for my father. What ran through my mother's veins when she was one with the Force. I wish to hear what my mother heard as she fought the Mandalorians until the moment she died on Malachor V. Then know this. You have the makings of a Jedi Guardian within you. And it is time I showed you that path. I will not let you down, Exile. I will honour you as I honour the face of my mother. 
And the Handmaiden has taken her first steps on the path of the Jedi Guardian. And this is one thing I really liked about the uh, Knights of the Old Republic sequel. You can train certain characters to become Jedi, or Force users, if we're going to be a bit more neutral about it. And I always felt that the Handmaiden made the most sense being converted into a Jedi. So let's see what happens now. Betrayal. Betrayal. Betrayal? Mistress? She has betrayed me. The last of your sisters has betrayed me. Betrayed us. She is your sister no more. She does not travel with the exile. Instead, she has chosen to walk the path of the Jedi. Mistress, forgive us, but are you certain? She would not forsake her oath so lightly. It is the truth, and it is done. Do you doubt me? No, mistress. It is you who saved the Jedi upon Dantooine, who have collected their knowledge and hid it here to protect it. But why? How did she fall? It is a sign of his corruption, and perhaps hers as well. He will train her, and she will be flawed. Interesting little cutscene there. And there's more cutscenes! With the Disciple, who I have not talked to yet. And I probably should at some point. Because guess what? We might be able to convert him to a Jedi as well. Jedi. Yeah, this isn't creepy at all. Betrayal. All thoughts of me will slide from your vision, from your mind, like water. You know who I am, but you will be unable to voice it, to remember it. What does a Jedi see? Only what I allow them to see. That cutscene would make a little bit more sense if I'd actually trained Disciple at this point, but whatever. Now, I need to get dressed because I look absolutely ridiculous, so let's get my weapons back out. And I need my guns, which I cannot remember which ones they are. This one and... Oh, I think it was this. Yeah, this one, I think. I could be completely wrong, and whilst we're here, if we look at the Handmaiden, you can see she's now got another level up, and she's now going to permanently level up as a Jedi Guardian. So we're going to make her look like an actual Jedi in a moment. So I'm going to give her the... Um, where's a weapon? I thought she normally had a weapon, like a Handmaiden staff. Oh no, it's here. There you go, i got to say. Uh, well, she can stay unequipped for now, and let's give her something she can actually do with having, because we never have to worry about that ever again. Ooh, that'll be good for her. Let's give her that. And yes. Yes. And then we'll give her some Achani shields, because that makes a lot of sense. Now then. Now that we've done that, let's talk to Disciple before we move on to Vissas, and then we can finish this part up. Or, no, actually, maybe we'll have to talk to Craig again, but let's see if we can get Disciple done. Because one thing I've noticed with the party swap mod is Atten and Disciple don't seem to be trying to fight over my affections because I'm not female. And I wonder if the same would occur with a female XR with the Handmaiden and Vissas. But anyway, Disciple. There is something I have observed, and now I feel I must say it. I have found your presence to be inspiring. With your growth in the Force, you seem to have found your center. And throughout the dangers we face, you remain calm and focused. 
Oh, loads of people have been telling me this already. Bloody hell. Trust me, it's all an act. I'm shaking inside. <laughs> I understand now why others followed you to war. Perhaps that is what leadership is. And it is something I have seen in only a few during my travels. In any event, it has been some time since I travelled with a Jedi, nor one so firmly upon the path. I wanted to thank you. I fear the stories that were spoken of you have misrepresented you. And if I have the opportunity, I shall reverse them whenever they arise. I thank you for your kind words, but they are not necessary. Very well. Then I shall keep my favourable opinions to myself. Okay. Forgive me, but there is something I must ask. In my study of the Jedi histories and the more... contemporary records, I have heard tales of a Jedi who was exiled. You are that Jedi. But the records are somewhat evasive on why this was done. I wanted to discuss why you chose to leave the Jedi Order and accept exile. I left to protect the innocents on the Outer Rim. I see. And because you went to war, they cast you out? That was my belief, but recent discoveries seem to indicate there may have been other causes. Do you have a record of this trial? Who said anything about it being a record? And, uh... Yeah, um, I'm not going to lie to him, there's no point. T3M4 has a copy of it. Perhaps I shall examine it when I get the chance. With your permission. I trust you. Go ahead. I appreciate your trust. Thank you. Very well. I'll be going now. So we gained some influence and light side points there. Let's talk to Disciple again. I have studied the hollow record of your trial. I am unsure what to make of it. I must confess Bloody hell, that, that was I was quick. searching for some meaning beyond the records. A reason for why one would leave the Order. Bloody hell, that was quick. You haven't even left the room. And nor have I, to be honest. I did not leave the Order. I was exiled. Yes, but exile is rare, and I have found it is not really something that the Order can enforce. Believe it or not, it was really your choice. I'm going to go for the third option, because there's a little bit of a throwback to the first Knights of the Old Republic there. You weren't there. They would have executed me if Jedi did not kill their prisoners. I don't think so. Perhaps some of them felt strongly about your sentence, but I think something else concerned them. Again, the choice to turn away was yours, not theirs. I still don't believe it. I'm not certain I do either, but it is something worth considering. We have spoken enough about this. Then I shall speak no more of it. Yes, is something wrong? What are you doing? At times, I meditate, simply close my eyes, and listen. It is quite calming. I try to treasure these moments before the next crisis begins. You've barely done anything in this game so far because I haven't taken you anywhere. Can you teach me how to meditate? Of course. It would be my pleasure. Um, Disciple, that looks quite dangerous. I wouldn't stick this through your head, um, dude. <laughs> oh, okay. So we can meditate with the disciple. I try to treasure these moments before the next crisis begins. Yeah, you've already told me this. I have other questions. That is hardly surprising. What do you wish to know? You look familiar to me. You are correct. I am afraid I have not been entirely open with you concerning my past. If I look familiar, it is because we have met before at the Enclave on Dantooine many years ago. As on Coruscant, Force-sensitive children are taken to Dantooine as well, though it is done rarely and only with those they believe are destined to become Jedi Knights. It is the secret nature of the place. If you are not chosen by a master when you have come of age, however, then the path of the Jedi is denied to you. I met you on Dantooine, long ago, briefly. You taught us the ways of the Force, how to hear it sing within others, within the life around Dantooine. It is difficult to explain the difference between you and Master Vruk, but I think it is because he was knowledgeable, but not a leader, not a mentor. You were different. We could all feel it. And I knew that if I were to have a master, I would want it to be you. And then you went to war. Many Jedi went to war, and the Jedi Masters proclaimed that you were Jedi no longer. 
Atris, the mistress of the Archives, was first among them. I knew at that moment that if you would no longer be a Jedi, then you must be correct. I realized I did not want to be a Jedi. Instead, I wished to follow your path. And in any event, there was no one to train me, even if I wished it. They all went to war as I grew past the age of acceptance. So you turned away from the Jedi, the Force, because of me? It is possible to forget the Force, you know. If you have not felt it strongly enough, then there is little to miss. But I never felt the Force as strongly as I did when I was with you. And so I decided to serve the Republic, study the Jedi teachings, gather them perhaps. It was important to me to understand the Jedi now that they were gone. I felt some part of you should be preserved, so that your lessons would not be lost. I am sorry that my leaving for war had such consequences on your future. Perhaps. I still harbor doubts about the path I walked. Never mind, I'll be going now. Yes, is something wrong? I have some questions. That is hardly surprising. I could train you to feel the force again. I think you are right. Yes! It is time. Good. I have watched you. You have become strong in the force again. But that is not all. You have achieved a center in the chaos around us. And I have felt it, my master, the one intended for me, left to fight in the Mandalorian Wars. Now she has returned, and I ask her now if she will train me in the ways of the Force. Okay, so the person who made the, <laughs> the party swap mod didn't quite modify certain lines, so the Disciple thinks I'm a female exile because he's scripted to act that way, but... Let's ignore that. I'm assuming he's just so excited to become a Jedi he forgot what sex my exile is. I will train you. The one who was to be my master was lost at Malachor V. So it ends. I want you to teach me the ways of the Force. To become a Jedi Knight. What I meant to be. Then let us meditate and open ourselves to the Force. Because you taught me that ability. Imagine the initial teachings of the Jedi, your first steps within the Enclave. Remember the wind among the plains of Dantarine, the feel of life around you, and at the moment I'm seeing just a very boring view of the Med Bay, because this looks much better. Think of what you felt when our paths crossed again. Get rid of that double-bladed sword out of your head, and at last, see the galaxy through the Force. Oh, that does look painful. And the Disciple has taken his first steps on the path of a Jedi Consular, which is awesome because I think it's a class that makes perfect sense for him, even though it doesn't quite follow on from the Soldier class. But if I were making this game, I would have made the Disciple a Scout, to be honest, than a Soldier. I don't know, I just think that makes more sense for his character and his backstory. But there we go, we've got two apprentices now. And if we take a look at the uh, party members, Disciple has now got the Jedi Consular class. So we can level him up next time we take him out. Right, let's talk to Visas then, because we haven't talked to her at all this entire playthrough yet. Hello. My life for yours. That's a little bit creepy, Visas. Are you alright? I am able to serve. If we enter battle, I will fight and die alongside you. You've barely talked to me. And I think that's a little bit brave, to be honest. Risk, you know, risking your life for someone you've barely talked to. That's not what I asked. I asked if you were alright. I... I have not heard that question in some time. My flesh is healed if that's the answer you seek. It'll do. I didn't mean to hurt you. I know. And I fear that others will see the mercy in your actions. And in my survival. And use it as a weapon to do you greater harm. How did you find me? I... felt you. Heard you through the Force. It was like a sound at the edge of hearing. And when I heard it, I found I could not ignore it. Who sent you? 
I serve my master. I am an emissary, a scout. My master was aware of a disturbance in the Force, but was unaware of its nature, of you. The disturbance is not something one feels from a living thing. There is little my master does not know, and that you eluded his sight for so long is significant. But I do not know why. I need to know where I can find your master. You cannot. His vessel roams the borders of known space, and even I do not know where he travels. Until he calls for me. Even if I could lead you to my master, I cannot permit you to find him until you are ready. Ready? If I bring you before my master, untested, without your potential realized, then you will be lost to me, and I cannot allow that to happen. It would be as if one brought fire to a paradise valley, shattered a cavern of rare crystal, or blinded a painter. My life is unimportant. Your master threatens more than just me. I cannot. I will not. I would die first and gladly to preserve you untouched, unharmed. Now that I have found you, I cannot sacrifice what I have found. If he is behind what has befallen the Jedi, then he must be stopped. You will meet my master. It is inevitable. I have seen it. And when you stand before him and realize what you face, you must be prepared. Until then, I must protect you, help you, until you are ready. This is why I'm not a big fan of Vissas, because she's a really terrible Sith. Not in the sense that she's evil, because she's the complete opposite of that. She's not committed to the whole Sith cause, and I just find her really dull as somebody who's... She, she's too easily swayed, and I think that's the whole point of her character, but I'm not a big fan of her. Why are you doing this for me? There's a, a greatness in you. A greatness that does not stem from the Force. It stems from who you are. And if my master does not understand you, cannot see you, then perhaps there is hope for us all. But if you seek to survive, then you must understand why this is so. If your master has trouble detecting me, how are you able to do it? There is much I see my master cannot. I fear it is because of my nature, the nature of my race. My people spend their lives seeing the galaxy, the energy streaming off stars, the growth of life, all things touched by the Force. Where are your people, your world, now? It is not a subject which I have spoken of since its destruction. But I shall talk to you about it because we've only just met. How was it destroyed? The planet was not destroyed. It remains. It orbits dead in space, but nothing lives on its surface. It echoes, but there's no one left to hear it. I have seen similar acts of destruction at Malachor. I've heard tales of Malachor. It is said that many of my people felt the end of the Mandalorian Wars from across the galaxy. But do not mistake me. I did not mean to draw comparisons between Qatar and Malachor. My homeworld still exists. It is intact. If your homeworld was destroyed, how did you survive? I am not certain I did. I was there when the planet died. To see everything around you extinguished, it was as if I was blinded. It was as if the Force had been bled from the world. As if everything suddenly went silent. I imagine there are worse deaths, worse pain. But if there are, I do not know them. I was the only living thing remaining on the planet of Qatar. And my life, my agony, was a flicker in the darkness that was the planet. All that I had been connected to had been severed. You were the only survivor? Yes, but it was not survival. I still wonder what would have happened 
if I had died with the others. If perhaps there would have been some way to hide my presence from the galaxy. If only I had not felt that pain, that loss, as strongly as I did. But it could not be done. When the life was bled from the planet, and yet somehow I remained, my master came for me. He walked upon the surface of my dead world, and there, lying in the bodies of my race, he took me for his own. And he made me see. And for the first time, I saw the galaxy. And I wished to die. It does make you wonder, actually, what it must be like to be somebody who is blind and then be given the gift of being able to see. I don't know, but I imagine it's almost traumatic in some cases. Going from one extreme to the other. He made you see. To this galaxy, my world, absent the currents and spectrums of the Force, was nothing but crude matter, rock, flesh, emptiness. He showed the flickering of life on other planets. The mass of beings that swarm through the empty places of the galaxy. To see such creatures, disconnected from themselves, their world, their place in it, unable to see the currents and how they affected everything around them. And why did your master show you this? He showed me to make me believe in his cause. He convinced me the galaxy, all life, must die. He fed upon its ugliness, its screaming, and in its place, he left silence. And where there was chaos, he brought stillness and order. I don't understand. It would have taken several Republic cruisers to destroy the surface of Qatar. It was not a thing done with machines or weapons. The Force is far more terrible, and it touches more lives than any machine can hope to slay. For everyone that feels the Force, strongly, deeply, each one feels and perceives it in their own way. You have strengths, whether you know it or not, and my master has his. His power is great, and it comes from hunger. He is a wound in the Force, more presence than flesh. And in his wake, life dies, sacrificing itself to his hunger. And those who feel the Force strongly are beacons to his hunger. My people, my planet, would have been attacked in time. It was inevitable. Yet we could do nothing about it. Never mind, I'll be going now. Forgive me, but before you go I must ask. Why do you do this? Why do you seek to help me? Teach me? Because I believe you can be saved. You must not do this. I cannot allow you to weaken yourself for me. I do not understand where your power over the dark side comes from. You are too even tempered and submissive for my tastes. There is more to the Sith than simply rage or slaughter. There are many kinds of hate. And all of them have the call of the dark side in them. The galaxy is filled with many such evils, and rarely have I seen anything else. What do you mean? I remember little of my homeworld before I entered my master's service. It is not as it was. There is little left of such memories. Or the planet itself. I'm not going to listen to this now. We've talked for absolutely ages. I must go. Very well. Perhaps we shall speak more of this at another time. But know this. I cannot allow you to weaken yourself for me. Okay, so we gained light side and dark side points there with a net light side shift. And we gained influence with Visas, so that's wonderful. Visas is very easy to sway to either the light side or the dark side, so keep that in mind. This has been a very long part of talking to every single party member and training a few of our party members up to becoming Jedi, which is awesome, or Force users. You can also convert them to Dark Jedi as well if you're doing a dark-sided playthrough. 
but I think we've seen enough for now and I know I've left this ass's stuff unfinished because I've been recording for absolutely ages now and I feel that because there's not much action in this part I feel that it's already pushing it beyond its natural limit so I'm going to leave it there for now and next time we'll decide where we're going to head to next I've got a fairly good idea which planet I'm going to pick next but we'll see and if you want to make suggestions feel free but thank you very much for watching and goodbye